Sometimes I hear people saying nothing has changed. But for someone to grow up the way I grew up in the cotton fields of Alabama, to not be serving in the United States Congress, makes me want to tell them, come and walk in my shoes. John Lewis grew up in rural Alabama at the height of segregation and Jim Crow. And at a very early age, he understood the inequality between African Americans and white Americans in Southern society. He was inspired to do something about that. He initially wanted to become a minister. So he came to Nashville, Tennessee as a young adult to study theology. He quickly, however, became sidetracked because he came to Nashville at the very moment when many African American and white students in that city were organizing to desegregate lunch counters and businesses in downtown movement. John Lewis quickly found his way to the members of the Nashville movement and that redirected his entire career. That's when he signed on to become a movement activist and joined the marches and the protests there. What makes John Lewis so significant in any history of the civil rights movement is that as a result of this decision that he made in Nashville to dedicate his life to social activism, he was present at practically every major event in the civil rights era of the 60s. For example, he became involved in the Freedom Rides in 1961. A bus was set on fire in Anderson, Alabama. We were beaten and arrested and jailed, but we helped bring an end to segregation and public transportation. Congressman Lewis, John Lewis, uh, was and is a very courageous man. He was willing to be arrested and to go to jail for things in which he believed, you know, the epitome of nonviolent protest for something he thought was right, you know, true equality and social justice. Another action that John Lewis was involved in is the famous march in 1965 from Selma, Alabama to the state capitol in Montgomery. Members of SNCC, along with members of the SCLC, led by Dr. King, Andrew Young, decide to march very visibly from Selma, this very small town that no one had ever heard of, to Montgomery in order to call attention to the need to protect the voting rights of the black people and the poor people of the state of Alabama. I happen to believe, and I truly believe this, that the vote is precious, almost sacred in a democratic society. It is the most powerful, nonviolent instrument or tool that we have, and we have to use it. When people come together and pool their political power, they can determine who is the mayor, who is the police chief, who is the governor, who is the congressperson, mm -hmm. and who is the president of the United States. John Lewis was invited to give a speech at the very important 1963 March on Washington in uh, Washington, D.C. The March on Washington is a proud moment for John Lewis, not only because he gets to stand before the nation talking about what it means to be a member of the movement, but also because he comes on as a prelude to Dr. King's famous I Have a Dream speech. Those who have said be patient and wait we must say that we cannot be patient. We do not want our freedom gradually, but we want to be free now. What distinguishes his leadership in the movement is that John Lewis always emphasized working collaboratively with other individuals and groups and building coalitions between groups, bringing majority black groups together with majority white groups. John Lewis is a member of the House of Representatives for the state of Georgia today, 
And in that capacity, he continues using some of the strategies and tactics of the civil rights movement. The time for silence and patience is long gone. We are calling on the leadership of the House to bring common sense gun control legislation to the House floor. Give us a vote. He has carried that mantle over many, many years in the United States Congress. And he has represented his district here in Atlanta exceedingly well over time. He's still very much devoted in his capacity as a civic leader to issues of civil rights and human rights, very much devoted to themes of tolerance and bridging difference in his work today.